is what it is, okay? I said, empty your mind. Be formless, shapeless, like water. Now, you put water into a cup, it becomes the cup. You put water into a bottle, it becomes the bottle. You put it in a teapot, it becomes the teapot. Now, water can flow or it can crash. Be water, my friend. Welcome to the 36th episode of the Deployment Dojo. This is a live show where we introduce and discuss software installation topics using the Wix toolset. I'm your host, Rob Menching, and joining me once again is the first student and my very good friend, David Edson. David, how you doing, man? Pretty good, thanks. All right, so we keep coming back to this topic of configuration, and I'm not quite willing to let it go because I wanna make sure we cover it fully because coming back to configuration again, if, after we switch to some other topic and run down that path for a couple small things, seems like it'll be like reloading all this context that we have right in front of us right now. Right. Right, all right. So today what I wanna do is dig into the remember property pattern a little bit. If you remember, I mentioned that uh, we've done this a little differently from that one when I wrote that blog post. In fact, why don't I bring that up right now? Right. I have this blog post back from 2010 about the member property pattern. And I had slightly different technique in that than what we came up with in the deployment dojo. And uh, I, I did the deployment dojo because it was a little easier to kind of approach it the way that we did as we were talking through it. But there are some downsides to the solution that we have or some things that aren't handled in the pattern that we have uh, compared to the one that I have on my website. And then my website actually is missing another piece on top of it. But my website, this this pattern here that's shown on the website uh, has an optimization in it that we should definitely bring into ours. So there's all these tiny little subtle differences in here that I want to walk through today in the remember property pattern so that where you are um, implementing this yourself, you could come back here and go, oh, I want all of these uh, different trade-offs. I want to pick the things that are most important to me. Most of it comes down to micro optimizations that don't matter. It kind of turns into how much complexity do you want in your code? Um, and you know, we'll understand a lot more, uh, I think more fully when we walk through all of this today. Does that sound good? Okay, yep, sounds good. All right, so uh, before we get started, I want this, I want to belabor this point. I want you to be thinking about this point as we're going through all of this. The Wix tool set is far and wide a declarative language, right? We just say file this directory from this location on disk, please build me something that will take care of that. That sounds familiar, right, David? Right. We don't have to say, please copy this file here and then uninstall this file here and then upgrade this file here. We just state this file goes here and then take care of it and the Windows installer does the rest of us, the rest of the work for us. Right. The challenges that we're dealing with in the remember property pattern are because we are doing procedural things, not declarative things. We are stating do this and then this and then this. And when you get into that situation, you now have to think through all the multitude of scenarios that could come up in different ways that your code can be executed from install to uninstall, to repair, to upgrade. And if we ever get to their patching, they're all these, oh, and then rollback often, not this scenario, but then you also have to think about rollback. When you start moving into a procedural uh, elements using the tool set, this after that or before that, those are key words. If you start seeing those, you are starting to get into procedural. You have signed up for a lot more work. And that's what we're gonna be talking about today is all that extra um, thought process that you have to put into play because you're doing things procedurally as opposed to declaratively. Okay. All right. And this is the first time on a very, very simple concept, just remembering the value of a property that um, will expose you to this. There are many other, not many, there's a few other places we can get this. And um, 
all of it comes down to custom actions in the Windows installer. We talked about those a little bit, just the ability to do your own things in the Windows installer. In this case, we're setting a properties during the install at our own time. When you get into anything of those custom actions, you end up signing up for a lot more work. And I invariably, when we're investigating issues for customers, the first thing we look for is uh, what custom action is failing. <laughs> and 99% right. of the time, 99.9% of the time, it's that. All right. So okay. I belabor this point because if you can avoid all this, then uh, you don't. We are avoiding a lot of problems by simply using declare in nature. It also, Martin has already said, it's time for a new blog post to kind of walk through all the rimmer property pattern options here, summarizing the uh, probably the answers from Deployment Dojo into text. I think that's true. I also think there's an opportunity to create something in the Wix tool set. I actually call it out in the bottom of this blog post that solves all this for you and wraps it all up in a declarative language feature, but we just haven't done that in Wix yet, but we probably should. It would have a lot of value. But we're using the remember property pattern as our first foray into all the challenges around doing procedural work inside uh, something that is much, much simpler if you do everything declaratively. All right. With that preface in the way, let's get our uh, let's get our branch, because if I don't do it now, I will forget. Yep. And I did say this as episode 36, right? Uh, yeah, yes. I believe so. 36. Yeah, yeah. 36. All right. And we're probably gonna have to create some version numbers here. And I want to grab the title. I don't know if anybody noticed. I don't know if people look at the titles, but um, let's see. I need to save, please. Oh, VS Code, the update is, yep, please save it. Let's look at this. 36, no, no, okay, version 36, all right, cool. Everything looks good there. You can see VS Code has a new folder where they're saving stuff because I have Visual Studio Code open in the background and they're creating a file by default now. I don't know. I'll have to go decide if I like that. Start episode episode boy i can spell 36 digging deeper in the member property pattern that's what we're doing today uh welcome all of you bert martin greens oh and miyuki's here great oh and robson all right great we have a good crew rolling along with us let's go ahead and get this committed and move on to actual work sorry i'm still dealing with a little bit of a cold um my kids keep bringing stuff home all right so here we are in our remember property pattern that we have uh, remembering both our data folder and setting it here and remembering the customer that we set here. All right. Right. This looks familiar, right? We have this property that we'll set by reading the registry key and then we set the value that we use data folder or customer if that remember property was uh, provided. Right. right? Right. And if it's not there, then we use whatever the default value for these things are. In this case, customer uh, value was valued and we don't touch it as long as if we didn't remember something. All right. So why don't we take a quick look at the blog post? I'll bring that up here and see how the blog post did this differently. Um, what it did is instead of I'm gonna make this a little bigger. Yeah, I think that's one more. There we go. That's nice and dark. So what it did, it approached it slightly differently, is that it took the property. So instead of using um, customer, so remember me, probably not a great thing. I should have called this, you know, the property we're searching for, but it was called remember me. Uh, so you can imagine remember me is the same as customer. Actually, should we just bring it over? I'll bring it into the code and we can look at it directly. Maybe that'll be easier as a peer to all these. All right. Oh, right. I got line numbers. That wasn't what I wanted. <laughs> uh, what did I get here? I don't know what that equals is. All right. Let's see. Okay. Remembered and then that. Okay. Now we're going to look at customer two here. Two. Okay. Okay. All right. It's getting saved now. So what it does is it did a search straight into the property. So it would remember straight into the value if it was there, uh, if if it was present. And if it wasn't, it would erase the value. Okay. So it would say, hey, here's customer two. And if this rich key wasn't there, that meant that the customer, the value that we were trying to remember every time would always get reset to blank. And that's a downside of the system that I provided um, or the, the way that I 
mentioned using on my blog, because you couldn't have a default value. It would always get overwritten by blank. Right? Okay, right. Because we were reading straight, instead of reading into a separate property and then assigning that to the one that we wanted, we were reading the registry straight into that value. If the registry key wasn't there, it would be blank. That's not great if you wanted to have a default. Okay? Okay. So that was a downside of the um, one on my uh, blog. Uh, the But my blog did do an extra step down here. <coughs> Sorry. Um, where it would remember values from the command line correctly. And you know what? I'm going to have to demo the problem now. All right, let's copy this out. So here, our system, the way that we have this remember customer allows us to set a, a valued, a, a default value here. Okay. Right. Let me show you where it doesn't work. And we'll just do a build real quick and build up, bring up the dojo or the sandbox. Why do I keep calling the sandbox the dojo? It's so funny because <laughs> it's called dojo.wsb. That's why. All right. Doing a build. The build succeeded. Sandbox will open up here. Oh, I need to create two versions for this to, to demonstrate this problem. All right, here we go. Bin x86 debug in US. All right, let's open up two versions. Let's make two versions. All right, start belt test, belt test package. Okay, this is on not the sandbox. I'll minimize sandbox, it's out of the way. Bin x86 debug in US. And this is going to be, I built this inside Visual Studio, right? So this is version zero. All right, and we do our trick of deleting the OBJ folder. So everything will rebuild. And then we build from the command line one time. And this will build us version 36, right? Because Visual Studio right. builds zero by default because it doesn't get set. So we initialize it to zero. Wait here and 36, version 36 will be here. All right, I'll go ahead and put that in a new folder version 0 0.36, all right. Okay, we have two versions. We haven't seen this, because you're like, wait, Rob, didn't we have all this working where we could set it from the properties and everything? It did work, but it has a problem. So let's go in and open this. All right, MSI exec switch I, uh, belt test package, customer equals default fire giant because otherwise the default value would be um valued log everything to i.txt which is my shortcut for install.txt all right this seems very familiar hopefully mm -hmm. right boom there we go we look over here in add remove programs there's version zero that's good and we'll just bring up i don't know we'll bring up the uh, web app here or the, the winforms app and it says fire giant yay all right we got a whole thing we now read the registry key cool so that's set now let's say that uh um we then do an upgrade and we're like oh oh, oh we 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 made a mistake i should have typoed it um and it's now fire giant you know llc right or whatever fire giant uh, how about this fire giant corp that's what we renamed ourselves here all right so in the next version me as a customer, I'm installing the belt test package from all those wonderful dojo people, and I need to change my customer name. So I decided during the upgrade, I'm going to change the uh, the customer name here. Does this make sense? Oh, yes. So I'm going to install, but I want it to change the value. And is it going to work? Well, probably because we're talking about it doesn't, but let's go ahead and go through it real quick. There you go. All those progress bar flashing, if you saw that, is because it was uninstalling and installing. This version now says version 0 0.36. We will open up our WinForm app and it still says Fire Giant, which our setting did not take place. So what went wrong? How do we tell? We go look at our log file, which is why we create these log files. I'm in version 0 0.36. So this is the upgrade log file. And we're going to go track down our customer property, right? Mm hmm. Search for customer, please. Customer. All right, here we go. Here it is passed on the command line. We could see that, yes, I did type this on the command line correctly. It was Fire Giant Corp. This is what we'd expect to happen, but it did not work. Why? Well, we're going to go searching for it. And it's going to say, hey, the customer property's current value is valued. That's because that's the default in the new MSI, right? 
its right. new value is Fire Giant Corp. Why did that change? It changed because of this line right here. Sorry. Not because of that line. Sorry. I take the back. It changed from valued to Fire Giant Corp because this is the Windows installer saying, hey, I changed this because you set it on the command line. Sorry. Let me very let me back that up. It changed it from valued to firegiant.corp because it's saying, hey, just so you know, the customer value was originally valued inside your MSI. You overwrote it from the command line. Okay. That's okay. this line. This is the right. one from the command line. Sorry. All right. Here it says, hey, we're adding the remember customer property pattern. Its value is firegiant. It read that from the registry. Right. That's these lines of codes. Hey, we did a registry search and we remembered customer was previously firegiant. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then we're doing the action set customer, which is this action here, the set property to set the customer because this remember customer was found in the registry, right? So what's right. it going to do? It's going to take the value that we found in the registry and overwrite what we had. And when we find customer, it says, hey, property change, modifying customer from its current value, Fire Giant Corp, as we saw it get set from the command line, its new value is Fire Giant. Does that make sense? Uh, okay, yeah. This set property, because we found a value, always wins over whatever you're passing in on the command line. Because the command line gets set very, very early in the processing, as we saw. And then this runs a little bit later. It's like, oh, let me read the registry. Oh, I found this value. Let me overwrite whatever value you had there before um, with customer. Overwrite the customer value. Okay. Okay. And this is what I was talking about when you start thinking procedurally. You have to think through all of the different ways that this code can run. You have to get all these um, properties set, and these set properties end up being custom actions behind the scenes. Um, you have to get them ordered just right to get the values uh, correct. Okay. Okay. So now so much more thinking. So, what is one way can you think of? that we might be able to avoid this. It's a little tricky, so I'm not sure if you'll see it. Um, Martin might have it, because he might have already done it out there, um, but he might not use this pattern either. He might do something based off of the old pattern. I'm curious, do you see a way that we could fix the problem? The problem being that this set property is running when it shouldn't, because we set something from the command line. Do you have any ideas? Not immediately obvious. No, I don't. What if we only set the customer after before? Yeah, no, moving the order won't matter. Uh, the problem is that we only want to set the, um, we only want to allow this customer to be overwritten if it's um, different. So one thing we could do, I'm going to change these to single quotes. I can do that in XML. And I could say customer equals valued and remember customer. What does this say? This says, if the customer value is still the default oh, and right. we found the remember customer, then you can change it. But if this was set on the command line to something not the default, then do not remember. Then do not use the remember, uh, the, the value we found in the registry. Hmm, okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, it, it makes sense. Let's go ahead and try it real quick because it's a interesting no nope, not that one i almost closed the wrong thing you merge the two patterns yeah so let's go ahead and close the sandbox and we'll do a build i'm curious what martin chose to do because there's other ways of doing this i'm curious how many um how many uh uh custom actions you end up how many set properties you end up meeting all right let me do a build here real quick. Yeah, all right, so that's the, yeah, so he's doing it the other way, do it. Okay, waiting for a build, ENUS, built test package. Okay, new folder B0. This is our build from inside um, Visual Studio. We'll delete our OBJ folder. And then we're gonna do a build from the command line with our new edit. Let's go build. While that happens, we use get changes and we can see what is the change we made. Please, diff, there we go. 
ignore the commented out, you can see we added this part here of the customer equals valued. Mm -hmm. All right, All right. All right, let's see. That command line build should have completed. And it did. So let's bring up our sandbox again. Just for clarity, bin x86 debug enus. Create a new, nope, not properties. New folder, v0.36. And drop that in. All right, sandbox is up. I don't need services. We probably could take services out now, don't you think? I think we've done enough. Yeah. All right, bin x86 debug enus version zero and open the CMD here. Okay, now we're gonna do our install again. MSI exec, switch I, the belt test package, uh, customer, we're gonna give it a typo this time, fire giant, no T, and then log i.txt. All right, so there we go, we're gonna install this. We should see it with a um, typo in the customer name. Right. Version zero is installed. Open up our app. Go through here. Oop, not D. Thank you. Open. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yay, he's in. And we can see, hey, we have it with T. All right, cool. We verified that all that code we've already written is not broken. Now 0.3.6. I'm going to do the same command, except I'm going to put a T on it this time. All right. All right. And then let's go ahead and run it. And if our condition worked, which I think it worked, I don't think I got, I've been known to get the logic backwards. Um, then it should have worked that we have our giant T on the end. Yay. The very important letter there. All right. Let's look right. at the log file again. I dot text. Search for customer. Let's track down the customer. All right. It said we are going to set customer to fire giant. Good. Modifying the property from the command line. Its current value is little smaller valued it's new values fire giant so we're overriding the default from the msi right uh, with, that's in the msi from the command line we said hey look we remembered this value it had a typo in it that's the one we've remembered and it said hey we're going to skip the set customer action because the condition is false and why is the condition false because customer does not equal valued it equals fire giant so it didn't do this and the value of customer then does not change. See? Later on, it stays fire giant. Okay? All right. But well, we fixed it, right? This is great. Looks like it. Yeah, this is great. There's a problem. What if we want to set the value back to valued when we're upgrading? <laughs> we won't. Right, and there's a remember value, we won't be able to set it back. Right? You can't ever go back to the default. <laughs> if once you remember, you can't go back to the default value because it will always the uh it'll say uh it equals valued and you have and you remember the value, therefore let's just use a remember value. So you'd always be running that every single time. Okay. So if the customer wanted to reset back to just being a valued customer, as opposed to a named customer, this solution would not work for them. Like, uh, okay, is that important to you? Maybe it's important. It depends on what your default value is. Is that a valid value that you want customers to provide in the command line to reset to or not? Right? Right. Yeah, it's okay. By the way, let's go ahead and fix data folder. Data folder is easier to fix because we don't default it to anything, okay? And it doesn't get initialized as a directory until much later. So the syntax on this is really easy. Not data folder and remember data, okay? So if we do not have a data folder set and there is something remembered, set it. Right. Otherwise, the user provided one on the command line, so use that, all right? So that works out pretty well, right? Because you can't set data folder. Well. You, again, you can't set it back to the default blank. You have to then provide uh, a real value. But in that case, you just provide the value, right? You just say, yeah, I want data folder back into C clone program files, I forgot, deployment dojo, you know, bin or whatever. So data, I forget whatever folder we put it in. 
Yeah, right? yeah. That's what they have to do on the command line. But here, you cannot, this basically says, once you have remembered a value, you can never set it back to um, valued. Okay. Okay. Uh, syntax issue real quick. Sure. Maybe this is just my please. ignorance on please, please. there. On the set on the condition where you have the double quotes. Yes. Do you could you put single quotes there like you did uh, below where you had ah, okay. you know, the, the chain logic or so clearly I can't put the double quotes inside the double quotes. For sure. Because right? XML's like, well, that's a string, this is something, I don't know what, and then here's another string, and it's very confused. All right. So can you use this syntax here? to create a string value inside? And the answer right. is no, because this syntax is actually Windows installer syntax, and it does not rec recognize single quoted values as quoted strings. Oh, okay. So if you really want to use double quotes out here, you have to use the, and, well, oh man, it's been so long since I've bothered to do it this way. And quote, I think, yeah. You have to use, this is XML syntax for that i mean they're the same except yeah. you can put this inside a quoted value this would give you the same thing if you really want to have yeah yeah <laughs> and i'm like forget that that's part of the the whole world that's why i like using single quotes in the cases where they're really useful all right ah, gotcha cool cool all right so <laughs> um what if we want to solve the valued problem for customer all right. Okay. We're gonna have to drop in that. Martin, I saw your question about set directory. We'll talk about that probably during sparring because it has lots of interesting things to dig into. Um, so we will talk about that. Okay. So if we want to do uh, the, uh, if we, all right. So the scenario is, let's just do it real quick. We've got a minute here. Let's just do it real quick because it's, it's easier to see it than to do it. I have everything built already. I'm going to reset the sandbox. This is the power of sandbox. We just go right back. That's not the right window. See what I was working on. All right. Uh, everybody's like going to go back and time travel back. And wait, which window did he open up? I've been working on the Fire Giant website. That's what I've been working on. All right. Um, let's see. OK, here we are. Nice, clean, everything. Nothing on that in XA6 debug in US V0. We're gonna open that command prompt. I love this trick. It saves me so much typing. Thank you very much for teaching us this trick. All right, here we go. MSI6, which I don't know when I'm gonna stop singing that song because I do love that trick so much. Uh, customer equals, we'll go to Fire Giant. Okay. All right. We'll install. We'll see our app go in. We will launch our app. All apps, deployment dojo, ta da, fire giant, everything is great. V0.3.6. We are going to do the same thing, but we're like, you know what? We're, we're, we're done being fire giant. We would like to go back to being a valued customer in the next version. So now we're in version 0 0.3.6. The enterprise decided, hey, we're going to install this. We're going to go back to valued. This isn't expected to work, is it? Right. Takes a little bit longer because it has to do an upgrade. All right, there's real B03.6. Bring this up, all apps. Don't make me a liar. Didn't actually test any of this. Remember, this is a live show. I try not to do a lot of this before we do this. I am doing this the same time you guys are seeing it because um, I think my mistakes end up being interesting to you guys. All right, so let's just go look at it again. Customer is equal to valued on the command line. That's great. Notice that the Windows installer did not print that message anywhere that said, hey, we're changing the value from valued to whatever you specify on the command line. It didn't do that because it didn't change the value. So it doesn't tell you that it changed the value. All right. So interesting. Okay. Right? It goes straight from, hey, did you know you, this? you set that on the command line? That's great. That doesn't do anything. I'm not going to log any message. The Windows installer is like, I'm not going to log any message because nothing changed. But guess what? It did find our previous value. Remember customer and then our set customer action happens and it modifies the customer property to its current value of valued, which was the default in the Windows installer, which is also what passed on the command line, but was ignored back to its value fire giant. And now we have another bug from the customer. You see how trying to get all this ordering means we have to walk through all of these steps to get them working just right. Right. 
This is what you sign up for when you start getting to ordering, all right? Let's say this bug comes to us and we have to fix it. All right, I'm gonna close the sandbox, we're gonna go again. How do we fix it? Well, we fix it with more work. You ready? Okay, yep. We need to remember <laughs> the value that's passed on the command line before we read it, uh, before we get to the remembering the custom action or the, the remember step, all right? So what I'm gonna do is call set property. Um, equals uh, customer from command line. Okay, value equals the value of customer before app search. Oh, no, wait, is this right? Is this gonna work? I, does this give me the default? All right, I think I may already have a problem, but we're gonna have to wait and see. Um, Yeah, I have a problem when defaulted tier two. See, I didn't do this before. Um, okay, what are we? What am I trying to do here? I'm trying to get the customer value, right, before app search runs, and app search runs all these searches. Remember that, right? So if I get the value of customer before the search is run, then I can say um, set property. If not customer from command line. And then we can also do this one here. If customer from command line. There. All right. So what did I do? I ran a set property and I set this property called customer for command line. It's a temporary throwaway value that I don't really care about. I'm going to remember the value of customer before app search then I'm gonna say, hey, set the property of customer to the value of customer for command line that I remembered if customer for command line was found, right? Right. Otherwise, set customer to the remember customer value if not, if I did not find the customer for command and a remember was found. And I'm pretty sure this isn't going to work because I'm always gonna have a value up here in the beginning because it is defaulted. Does that make sense? Uh, yes. Yep. So this, by the way, just a second. This, by the way, is why the uh, my, my blog post version does not handle default values, because this is as simple as it gets. Uh, this is too simple. So if we do not have a default value, which means we could just not declare property here, this would work, right? Right. Customer would not be set. We'd remember it before app search. Then after app search, either we use what we found in the command line, if something was found, or we'd use what is used from the registry if we didn't find anything from the command line and we found something from the registry. Otherwise, we didn't find anything in the command line. We didn't find anything from the uh, registry that we stored. So we just use blank. Right, okay? Okay. All right. We need a default though. We have to solve the default problem. We want a default, which means that we need a third property here. That's essentially this. Set the value to our default value, valued when we don't find it on the command line and we don't find a remembered value. Right. What have we done? We've essentially done the entire matrix of values here uh, procedurally. We've had to lay them all out so that we would evaluate them ourselves. This sort of thing that you're seeing here that we've had to do where we have all these conditions are, is done for us inside the Windows installer and a lot of cases when doing installations. This kind of mutually exclusive multiple paths down the world is is pretty common in the installation. We're like, if it's this, do it this way. Otherwise do, you know, if you're installing and the file's not there, do this. If the file is there, do this. If the file is older, you know, I mean, you just end up with this long list of ifs that you apply to a set of rules. We're doing essentially the same thing here. Um, trying to set these values, all right? 
Why don't we give this a try and we'll see if it actually works. Okay. Because I just said, yeah, this works <laughs> without actually testing yeah. it at all. We'll take your word for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I want to kind of see that it does. Also, I want to think about this. I wrote all this logic now. Oops. Duplicate set customers. Ah, oh, right. And because I'm using the same customer here, I can no longer use the free default action, which was called this. So this is set customer. I have to name each of these now, right? Because it's like, hey, I'll call it set customer for you by default. The Wix tool set will do that. But if you have the same customer ID set, 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 it needs a unique name for each of them. So I'm going to say set customer from command line. Ooh, ooh, ooh. This is set oh, oh, action name equals, oh, use single quotes. That was interesting. Um, what is this? This is that customer from registry, right? Right. And then the last one is set action equals, hey, it switched the single quotes on me. That's interesting. Set customer uh, or default. kind of nice is self-documenting now, right? <laughs> right. Oh, man. Look at all this work. And look at all these things that we have to go back and test. Uh, set customer from command line. Duplicate symbol. <laughs> <coughs> um, this is complaining because this one is also going to be called set customer from command line. Um, <laughs> uh We'll use the word assign instead of set. That'll get us out of the, there. Assign customer default, assign customer from registry, assign it. The problem is that because this property is called customer from command line, the action by default is called set customer from command line. If we oh. went and read the documentation. So I, I'm getting all these duplicates down here saying, hey, you can't name that set customer. You can't name this one set customer from command line. This one is gonna be called set customer from command line. No, and I, oh, okay, fine. So I'll use the keyword assign and that'll get me out of all of that. All right, here we go. Build started. This is building version zero. Why am I belaboring this? Why are we going through all this? Why is Why are we looking at all this pain? I want you to be very aware that when you start getting into, um, oh, wait, this is empty, right? Okay. All right, I paste it if I. <coughs> um, that when you get into this world of trying to set, um, uh, uh, running custom actions and doing all these things, uh, all this work procedurally, I want you to remember the story that or this path that we went through. Do a build to get version zero three point six. Um, this path we had to go through, so that you'd be like, ah, I need to be very careful and really think through all of the repercussions of choosing to use a, uh, a procedural method to do something instead of being declarative, which is why you will see us all the time on discussions just going, avoid custom actions, avoid doing it procedurally, just use the things that are built into the Windows installer for you. All right, here we go. Spin it back up. Okay. All right, here we go. Good, good, good. And bin XA6 debug ENUS. We'll start version zero. All right, so we have a lot of scenarios to test, David. Which one would you like to do first? <laughs> just the default one. The default one. So we'll just install it with nothing? Yeah. Yeah, all right. You're like, let's start with the simple one, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, I may have made a mistake here along the way, and we may find it. Um, there's a very real chance of that. Um, cool. So that's version zero. Let's make sure that we that actually installed. Hey, valued. Yep. And let's just like look. Um, I dot text real quick, just so we can see them all. Notice that it, you know. Customer's not initialized anywhere. Here's all the set command line, set customer for command line, which ends up doing nothing. And then we have this assign customer for command line, condition is false. Assign customer from registry, condition is false. Assign customer default, it is true. Therefore, we finally get our first 
initialization of the customer property to valued. See all the things we had to go through to get to here? Yep. All right, well, that worked. Uh, I guess we're here. We could go try uh, version 03.6 and we could try, um, which one do you want to do now? I guess we could change it. Right. Customer equals buyer giant. Sounds good. Okay, here we go. Oh, I left the app open? No, I did. That's the install. All right, open up our app again. And the value says, mm -hmm. uh, come on. I don't know why the waveform's up. Yay! Wow, that's pretty good. All right, let's look at i.txt. Make us big again. Search for a customer. Customer set on the command line fire giant. That's good. Property changed. It's setting its value to customer. It's just saying, hey, this is what we set from the command line, by the way. We're initializing customer from the command line. Uh, it says set customer from command line. And it is setting the property called customer from command line to the value fire giant. We are squirreling away that um, customer value. Right. We are trying to do the remember. The remember found a value. It found valued, <laughs> right? So it did remember our old value called valued. And then we try to, then we do assign customer for command line. And that ends up not changing, I guess, anything, right? It doesn't change anything because the customer already was set for the command line. So that ends up not having to change the value for the command line. <laughs> then sign from the registry is false and customer default is false. So we don't end up changing the value. So customer ends up staying, I want the customer staying fire giant in the end. Yes. Are we having fun watching our, walking our way through our logic table? <laughs> right. Well, right. we only got one more though, now, right? Uh, do we want to do the last one? You want to do the last one? Yeah. Yeah. Let's, yep. Let's yeah, yes, he does. He really does. All right. What's the last one? I'm uninstalling belt test. I'm going to trust that it cleaned up correctly because, right, we did, right? I'm pretty sure. Yay. Our files are all here, are all gone, and all that kind of stuff. All right. What's the last one then? Uh, V0. We install clean from the beginning with a custom value, right? Right. Fire Giant Corp. Just so in case we find Fire Giant, we know that something did not clean up correctly, but I'm probably confident. So yeah, uh, Fire Giant customer, here we go. We can just look at this log file, correct? Yep. All right. I'm just gonna open up the app just to show. And it says Fire Giant Corp, as we expect. I.txt, here we go. By the way, in case you were wondering, the Fire Giant customer or a Fire Giant company name is just Fire Giant. We don't have any suffix on it. It confuses people sometimes. Like, wait, you're not an LLC or a corp or an ink? We're like, oh, we're just Fire Giant. Turns out you don't have to have a complicated name. All right, we have initialized customer property from, <coughs> from the command line. Oh, welcome, Tom. Sorry, you're jumping in the middle of a whole lot of fun here. Um, set the value from the command line and it remembers from the command line the value fire giant corp all right great so we have remembered that we set this from the command line uh assign customer from command line doesn't end up having to do anything because we set it from the command line to initialize it assign right. customer from registry is false set customer to default is false which means it doesn't change our value and in the end we see that customer equals fire giant when we get farther down it is correctly set yay yay everything worked i think I think we've covered all the cases, I think. But you can see why you're like, oh my gosh, this is a lot of extra work if you need to do all of these different um, situations in here, all right? <laughs> right. Plus you have all of these actions that are running during your install that you have to think about. So now you have these things are gumming up your log file, um, but also running. It's not like they take a long time. They're, they're near instantaneous. They're not quite you know, single assignments. They do take a little bit more extra work, but they're really fast. Um, but the more of these you have, just the more things you're going on inside your one installer. Um, that's why I started with the pattern that we had and I wanted to get to here so that we could at least decide if we like this level of complexity to get all of these features. And it turns into what do you need? Uh, what does your business say you need? Make sense? Makes sense. All right, second thing to cover real quick, I think. 
let's go jump in that. Okay. The second thing here is I was talking about how all these properties run. We have to jump in a little bit in the deep end, David. I have to drag you a little bit farther forward because I want to leave this here. We don't quite have everything you, we don't have all the context you need for it to make sense. Uh, so you're gonna have to trust me on a few things. <laughs> um, yep. But uh, I want to put this here because this belongs here for all of you that have been following along and have dealt with the windows or some. I want you to, uh, to know about this next um, optimization. That is an important thing to understand. Um, and that is right now here. If we go back and look at our log file is the easiest way to see it. So I want to grab this line. I'm on line 219 right here. Okay. Do I have VS code? I do have VS code open. All right. I'll open a new window in VS code and word wrap. No word wrap. Word wrap. Thank you. Okay. This is line line 219 from our log file. Okay. Okay. That's pretty far down the log file, right? <laughs> yes. And if we, if we go back up to and find customer, this is line 39 from our log file. Go back to um, VS Code. Line 39. All right. So you see this line here, it says command line on line 39. You know, you're like, why is it line 39? Well, the Windows installer dumps a whole lot of information about the operating system and itself above that. And then it finally says, hey, by the way, here's the command line you called, all right? Boom. And then later on it says, we're switching to server. And here's all the data that we're gonna pass along to the server, okay? Server is the Windows installer starts a separate process from the one that you're running initially that it calls, that's where it actually does all of the installation work. We haven't talked about UI yet, but Windows installer packages can have UI. You've seen them, installation wizards, right? Where you hit the next button, next button, next button, then hit the install button. Right. Um, and you don't read anything that, and no, I mean, you question why there's so many next buttons when you just really wanna hit the install button. Um, there is the possibility of putting UI into your installation package. We've not done that. We will cover that eh, sometime in the future. Um, that is done in what's called the client side of the Windows installer or the UI process. It does not elevate. It does not have uh, admin rights to the whole machine and cannot modify the machine state because it's running UI, right? It's running a user. It's not until you hit the install button or the execute button behind the scenes, it's exec the install executes um, step. Then it goes to say, okay, we're gonna switch over to the server side and now I should go do all the work of applying the machine. And that's when your UI switches from buttons to a progress bar. Does that make sense? It's, okay. Right. And at that point, if you ever hit install, you usually hit the install button, then you'll get the elevation prompt. They'll say, hey, you're now modifying your machine state. Have you noticed that with Windows installer packages before? You go through right. the UI without any elevation prompt, comes up very quickly. That same thing we did with our UI uh, when we created a, an elevation or an elevated button. So you can bring up the UI, look at it really fast, mm -hmm. and then hit that to save the button. Same thing with installer. Brings up the UI pretty quick. The installer is not fast it's showing its UI, but it'll bring up its UI. You can go through that whole process, not elevated, and then you hit the button to say install execute. It switches to the server side. So it takes a block of data and sends it over service says here. Go do your in. Go do the installation process over on the server now, and uh, install all the stuff. Do what do what you're supposed to do, and all you're doing in that UI was setting properties. Does this make sense? Right. Yep. Okay. We have no UI, which means the time between uh, when we start here from the command line and the time at which you would hit the install button is measured in milliseconds, right? Okay, so you see here it's, uh, you know, same second. So we're, we're measured in 120-ish, 25 milliseconds, all right? So essentially what the Windows Store did was it came up, it ran through the UI side, which was nothing, calculated what it needed to do, switched over search side, and then did it. And we don't have an elevation prompt in the sandbox because, do you remember? Mm, because it's <laughs> no i don't remember everything in the sandbox elevated oh that's right so we don't see the elevation prompt but if we did you we would see at this point right here in the log file the elevation prompt so if i like took a long time 
uh, to uh, hit the elevation prompt. Near here would be the time block where the elevation prompt was shown and it took me a while to hit the button. Okay, it's okay. very fast because it just goes straight through it. The thing I wanna show you is that, look, it's passing all these properties because it calculated them on the uh, client side, the UI side, the client side, and it's gonna pass them over to the server side. Okay, why does any of this matter? Why am I belaboring this? Because you can tell the Windows installer, hey, if, if you've calculated these values, you don't have to calculate them again. You can say only do the installate, only do this action in the first sequence that you hit, either on the client side or the server side. You don't have to do it on both. Does that make sense? Okay, yes. So it's, I think maybe this log file will show it. I didn't look. So um, let's go look at that customer from command line. Okay. So we're here on line 126. I'm gonna keep putting these up into, now, this is a thing I do, by the way, and really bought big um, um, log files. Sometimes I'll take the line numbers and bring them over. Whoops, that's not what I want. Here, line 126, okay? So to help me uh, keep track of where I'm at in all the processing that's going on, could be really useful, all right? And then we're gonna look for a set command line from customer. Here's the three lines where we run it. We're on line 130 still. Now we're on line 350. And you see this S? Line 350. S means the server side, the elevated side. And look, it's doing our action again. It's redoing all of those custom actions that we did on the client side. It's doing them on the server side again. Does it need okay. to do them again? Is it gonna get different answers? I mean, Shouldn't. It, it might, that would, it, it, but it shouldn't. And given what we've written, it definitely shouldn't because that would be bad, right? right? So you have all these you know, actions that you're doing and it turns out, so you're running all this, you're taking extra time, extra complexity in your install and you're running it twice, one on the US side and one on the server side. You can avoid that in the Windows install in, in Wix by saying uh, sequence first. This says, only run the action in the first sequence. Whichever one you end up doing. There are ways of bypassing the UI sequence and going straight to the server sequence, okay? The default value is both, okay? So by default, it runs in both, which is why we're seeing it here. But we can optimize to say first, you can also say only run on the UI side or only run on the execute side. So you can control when these run. In our case, we just want them to run the first time and then have them flow down through the rest of the system. And it will reduce the amount of extra work we're running um, everywhere. I th at least that's the theory. I haven't tested this either. But does that make sense? Yeah, it makes sense. <coughs> it's just gonna take our, our word for it and not do all of this extra work because in the UI side, we already calculated it. Where is my log file? We calculated the correct value. We did all that work. We set the customer correctly. And then we are switching to the server and we are passing the customer right here. That's it. Don't, don't do any more work. That's the right value server. We're giving it to you. Go. Have a nice day. Skip all these extra steps. For these things, it's really fast. It doesn't matter that much. But it... Um, but if you had bigger actions, things like that, this is very good to know. It also cleans up your log file a little bit. Cool? Cool. Cool. Makes sense. All right. I could, I'm not gonna run through it again because I'm confident it's going to work, but I'll run it again and we can report back if I get any of that wrong because I wanna jump into the thing that um, Martin brought up about set directory. All right? All right. All right, let's go smart a little bit. Okay. So Martin asked the question, why are you using a uh, for data folder, which is a folder, right? It's often our folders, data folders right there. It's defaulted to the data directory inside our install folder, right? Remember all this? Right. It's been a while since we looked at it. And the Windows installer will default this value for us when it calculates all the directories on the machine. Um, and we can avoid some of these problems 
well, we don't avoid a lot of these problems. We have to do a lot of these same things to set data folder um, as well. Uh, but the Windows installer uh, will manage data folder, the default for data folder for us because of whatever we put in the directory tree. Now, uh, Martin mentioned, noted that there's a thing called set directory. Data folders are directory. Why don't we use a uh, directory instead of using property to set data folder? Because data folder is not a property, it's a directory. Okay. Right? And, right. and you'd be like, ah, you would intend, you'd think, oh, I should use set directory. Why not do that? There's a good reason. One, the Windows installer does treat properties as directories, and then it will treat directories as properties. That ends up because they're so common to be used everywhere in your install. They just said, you know, what? we're just going to mash all of the directories into properties um, at the point at which we calculate them. And they don't calculate the directories right at the beginning because they have to like touch the registry and read a whole bunch of values to find all your directories. Because program files folder is a localized value that's different on every computer. So when they start up, they have to go like look it up themselves. And they do it during um, a process after app search called costing when they are going to figure out how much disk space is available in each of these folders. And as you can imagine, that can take a little bit of time because it's touching the disk. Right? It's like, hey, how right. many, you know, this directory, how much space is in here? This directory, how much space is in that? Does this directory exist? No, okay. Things. So it's doing a lot of calculations on all those disks. Um, and that happens later after app search. Set directory has a very specific use. And what it does is it allows you to change a directory after the Windows installer has calculated it. So when you can treat directories you can set directories like properties before the Windows installer has done all that costing all that analysis of the directory tree but after if you want to change the directory for some reason you have to call set directory to change the value of that directory because what it does is it causes the Windows installer to say oh you're changing this directory i now have to go and recalculate the whole tree underneath it again that's a bit more expensive does that make sense like that would be more expensive right so you don't want to call set directory unless you know you need to change the value of the directory after um, after costing. And it's a very rare situation that you'd want to do that. The, the one case that you could kind of do it is if you want to show the user the disk sizes and everything in the UI and then allow them to change a directory, um, like one of the choices they made, and then show them again the resulting disk spaces of the disk space that they'd be using there right so it's like okay i picked my c drive to install to and you see it you're like oh there's not enough disk space then in your ui you're like okay i've already calculated everything let me change my data directory to the d drive it has enough space on it it has to go and recalculate d drive all the files that go there and then says okay cool i have now this much space in that directory that's the reason you'd want to change it after the fact okay only use set directory when you know you need to change the value the value of a directory after the Windows installer calculate. Otherwise, just use set property because it's way faster. You can just say, hey, go ahead, Windows installer. I'm going to set data folder to C colon blah, 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 whack. And then the Windows installer will be like, okay, that directory, when I calculate it during costing, I will calculate it like it's that value. And then it goes and does all the work for you one time instead of recalculating, recalculating all the disk space every time. So that's a bit more of a, a deep topic, but Martin, you asked, so that's why um, I use set property and not set directory. And I honestly don't remember the last time I used set directory for anything. And I think the documentation tries to explain parts of that, but then there's like different custom action numbers and it's really subtle um, why you'd want to pick the two of them. It's almost like we should say, set directory and recalculate or something in the language maybe i don't know i don't know. understanding that directories are properties and properties are directories for the most part um at a high level is just kind of the easy way to go and then uh, don't use set directory cool got it got it yeah 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 yeah, yeah. all right You'll know when you need it, because if you use set property and your directory doesn't change, you'll be like, oh, that's what Rob said. There's a certain point at which I can no longer call set property change your directory. That's when you know you need, or sorry, set, yeah. Did I say that right? There will, if you always use set property and you find out one time that when you set it, the Windows installer ignored the setting of that, that's when you come back and go, ah, oh, 
I remember that episode when Rob said set directory can be used after costing and I need to change it after costing. So that's when I use set directory. That's probably the easiest way to do it. Only use it when you finally hit a point where you're like, ah, oh, it didn't work. And I remember now why, because Rob said, and then you use set directory. Before that, just use set property. That's what I would do in a deployment Tojo episode. <laughs> <laughs> right. I'd use it and I'd be like, oh, Dave, I forgot. Hey, let's talk about set directory. And we haven't had that situation. And in fact, should we ever hit that, I'm probably going to do exactly that. I'm going to use set property until I remember, oh, why didn't it set the value? Oh, I need to use set directory in this case. <laughs> uh, it's gotcha. so rare. I haven't even figured out, concocted a story that we could get into it. All right. So we covered two things today. We covered the uh, more complex, the more detailed, uh, the, the more involved uh, using all these properties, which allows you to change the value uh, during upgrade, which may or may not be a thing, um, but you end up with all of these properties. And uh, we then talked about the sequence here that you can optimize when your actions run by narrowing how often they run. In our case, we only need them to run in the first sequence. We only need to calculate these values once and just use them through the whole rest of the process. Mm -hmm. This saves us doing all that extra work. All right. So David, the question to you now, as we wrap up, do we commit this change here? Oh, I'd say yes. I mean, unless you're telling people that really we should never do this, right? No. This is a good example of yes. you know, how, to, how to do it, even though we may not use anything like that in the future, right? So I, I think you should commit it. Although you could get rid of the, the comment below all the, the oh, oh yes 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 I do need to get rid of this. All right, I think that's the right. Answer. Oh, both during install and upgrade and upgrade upgrade. <laughs> Yes? I think so. Okay. Oh, I need to get rid of set directory because that will not apply. Oh, right, right. All right. Build solution. I also feel like this thing somehow along the line started switching to when it started seeing I started using single or quotes. It's like, hey, we're going to start switching to single quotes everywhere. Um, and it just like, hey, let's do that everywhere. There we go. All right. Cool. 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 I think that's that, man. What did we do? We did all this work and we changed one file. <laughs> right. <laughs> but it's it's a it's a, a very interesting set of changes. All right. So this is uh, I think I want this message here. Um, actually, we'll add the file and oh yes, do save it, please. Thank you. Um, close. Let's see. So what I want to say, um, more advanced uh, version of remember property pattern that supports um, uh, changing the value during install and upgrade, right? Yep. Remember property pattern. This more advanced and complex version there we go that's what i want to say there we go there we go i think that's a good message commit yep. that uh is that it that's it that's everything i think that's it uh, um, yep i have to decide if i'm gonna keep the settings json i have to go look at it okay here we go push it all right that's what we got this week i'm gonna go kick this over to uh uh <laughs> github and episode 30 episode please 36 Digging deeper into the remember property pattern. Copying it from my show notes. I hope you guys had a good time. We'll be back next week. I do think this, I have said this before. I know I said this before. I do think this is everything out of my brain about configuration that we might need to cover right now. Um, you can see why I saved this for last, and, but why I want to touch on it before we had to come back because try to remember everything we needed to remember to then be able to dig into these. Probably would not have been much fun. So uh, we'll be back in another week, right? Yes. Yep. Next Wednesday. Um, and we'll start moving on to whatever topic uh, I pick next, which I haven't quite decided what it will be. Uh, but until then, you guys keep coding.
You know I am. Bye. See ya.